afternoon, everyone. How are we all doing today? Let me just get this set up here a little bit. So I greet you in Jesus' name here in Haverhill, Massachusetts, uh, waiting for my sidekick to arrive from her busy uh, week that she's having. That's Ella. Uh, she should be here shortly. Uh, so how's everyone doing? I see Tony is uh, greeting us today from Italy. Um, so I think there's a six hour difference. So it's 12 noon here. <clears throat> so it's dinner time over there in Italy. Uh, God bless you, Tony. Glad you could be on here today. So it's uh, amazing uh, what we can do with, uh, with this uh, live stream going around the world. Um, sometimes Tanya is with us from Pakistan. I noticed last night uh, after, I think after the live stream was over, someone clicked that they liked it and they were from Vietnam. Uh, don't know how that happened. But, uh, hey, all right, so Tony's here, uh, David Newfell is here. David, you cannot quit school. You cannot quit. It's not allowed. Uh, God is going to provide for you. Um, just hang on, brother, hang on. Sandy, God bless you. Good to see you. And uh, Gail Zanke down in Tennessee. So let me open up with a word of prayer. I have several scriptures to share with you today, uh, <clears throat> but I want to tell you what I what I what I received early this morning on my front porch. But let me pray first, dear Father, Lord, thank you for this Thursday talk. We seek your blessing and your anointing upon our time together for this next half hour. We welcome your Holy Spirit to speak to us, speak through us, bless our time of fellowship. Let everything that we say and do. Bring honor and praise to you, O oh Lord. We thank you for it. And uh, I pray, Lord, for Ella to get here safely and for her to be at peace and not to worry if she's a few minutes late. It's okay. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Okay, so Malade is here, e eager to watch the video we just posted about fault. Yeah, I, I came across that this morning. I like the, the man speaking. Uh, not too familiar with the people he's speaking about, but I know that they're, uh, I know that the woman is very popular. Uh, so anyway, that's good. Let us know what you think, Malada. So anyway, uh, this morning, got a, a text from Stacy to check our, our back porch. Our back porch on the parsonage serves basically as our front porch because the front door is uh, inaccessible due to it being so busy and noisy in the front part of our, of our home on Main Street. I see Ella just uh, pulled in right now. Um, but I got a note. Well, first of all, uh, Gigi got a, a card from Ella, just a card about uh, being her grandma, how, how much uh, she loves her and appreciates her. Hello there, Ella Victory. Hi. I see you're, you're in your bathing suit, but come on in. Yeah. I was just getting started without you, and I was sharing uh, the note I got on, the, on my back porch this morning, oh. along with a plate with tin foil on top of it, which was uh, a chocolate cake. Did you make it? Yeah. Man, I, you know, it's almost all gone, you know. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't, you know, I had one, then I had two, and I, you know, a little bit more, and Gigi had some, so it was great. Thank you for making that for us. Hey, Jack, how you doing? Oh, thank you, delivery boy. How you doing? So. Where were you at the beach? Yeah. Plum Island. Mhm. Mm oh, how was it down there today? It was actually very good. Good. A little overcast though right now. Was it cool down there? No. It was okay. Yeah. Good. Good. The water was cold though. I bet it was. But we still went in a lot of times. <laughs> good. So this is the note I got from Ella. God is like thunder. He's warning us to protect ourselves from lightning of lies. The thunder is telling us to protect ourselves and our hearts from the lightning. Because the thunder warns us to get inside because of thunder. Lightning. Right, right. And um, Ella said, please find scriptures. Thank you. <laughs> And Thursday talk, Papanella. Okay, so I did find, look at all the scriptures I found. Oh my goodness, that is a lot. A lot of scriptures. 
But uh, let, me, let me open up with a couple of scriptures from Psalms that talk about uh, the voice of the Lord is like thunder. And I, I was thinking that in many ways, the Lord is speaking like thunder um, <coughs> through the various events that are going on in our world today. The pandemic is one way the Lord is speaking. Uh, the reversal of Roe versus Wade is another way the Lord is speaking. Uh, the violence in our streets that's happening, I think God is speaking through that. Um, I think the Lord is speaking through all the natural calamities that are happening, the fires and earthquakes yeah. and uh, hurricanes and tornadoes and stuff. So anyway, Psalm 29, uh, listen to this, everybody. This is Psalm 29. Mm -hmm. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory do his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them also skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, everyone says, glory. The Lord said enthroned at the flood and the Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Nice. And the voice of the Lord is, if we, but we have to listen for the voice of the Lord. Yep. Sometimes it's loud, but sometimes it's very quiet. You know, Elijah talked about that, that the Lord spoke to Elijah, that the voice of the Lord was not in the earthquake, not in the storm and the wind, but the, the voice of the Lord was a still, small voice. Yes. So sometimes he kind of whispers to us, and we have to be able to discern you know what's going on there so Ella <clears throat> what were you thinking about when you wrote about the the thunder and the lightning well I was thinking like God is warning us you think like I think the, I do but what are you thinking like he's warning us to protect our hearts and okay. our minds so that the lightning of lies when it strikes it won't affect us so you have this imagery in your mind and in your spirit about thunder. Mm -hmm. Thunder always comes before the lightning, right? Warning. Thunder and then lightning. So thunder's the warning, and the lightning is like the the effect of something bad. Yeah. Pretty much. Wow. So thunder warns us to protect ourselves, get inside, so that the lightning won't affect us. I like that analogy. I think that's really good. Have you ever gotten stuck in the thunderstorm? No. Or a lightning storm? I don't think so. If it's lightning outside, what should we do? Go inside. <laughs> go inside. And I think going into a car is good because the car is, is, has rubber tires on it and the rubber tires makes the car get grounded so the, the lightning can't really hurt the vehicle or whoever yeah. is in the vehicle. You know what I like to do? I like to, um, when it's thundering and lightning, it always gets dark. Yeah. So I like to go inside, close all the shades, mm. so it's all dark in the room, and watch a movie. <laughs> and get cozy. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's and good. put very cozy clothes on. Oh, let me see here. Alinda here. Hey, Alinda, good to see you. Millie Cobbett's here. Your mommy's here. Ella's speaking prophetically. That's right. Well, Ella, let's talk about this. You know, right. when, when the pandemic started in March of mm -hmm. 2020, a lot of people, including myself, I think we may have talked about it on Thursday Talk, we're talking about, well, let me make sure I got the right reference here. Uh, the first or second? Let's get this mixed up. Second Chronicles 7.14, when the Lord was speaking 
And he said, uh, if my people who are uh, called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I'll hear from heaven and heal their land. And many people thought that at that time that the pandemic was um, a way to shake up everybody. It was like thunder. Oh. That was like, and the pandemic was like thunder. Because when you read that, that passage in Second Chronicles, uh, the Lord, the, so the Lord said, if you repent and turn to me, I will heal your land. But it was the Lord who caused all the destruction on the land. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an enemy. It was God that did that. So he was saying, if you repent and turn, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of you. If, if you don't, though, the lightning will come, so to speak, and bring more destruction upon the land. Hey, Grandma Dole is here. Hi, Mom. How you doing? Yeah. So then I was thinking that, okay, so that was like two years ago, two years and three months ago. And a lot of people have repented. A lot of people have mm -hmm. sought the Lord and, mm -hmm. you know, prayed and tried to make things right. Mm -hmm. And now we have had a very significant change in our U.S. policy regarding abortion. You know, the whole uh -huh. Roe versus Wade was turned yeah. around, and now it's, it's uh, the whole concept is being returned to the states to decide what each state will do, you know, state by state, instead of a federal mandate that it's, that it's okay, mm -hmm. which I think is a really good step in the right direction. Yes. But I wonder if that is the result of we as a nation, the Christians, repenting and turning to God and, and trusting him to heal our land, this may be part of that process. So the thundering brought about uh, the idea of repenting and getting right with God and you know surrendering and making things good. And then we see the results of that where a major Supreme Court decision was made in God's favor. And I think there might be something to that. Yeah. So the thunderings of the Lord. Let me read another scripture. I see you have some things written down here. Yeah. But let me read uh, Psalm 18. In verse, uh, Psalms 18, verse 13. It says this. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. Hailstones and coals of fire. So anyway, the Lord, you know, thunders from heaven and he shakes the nations and he shakes people. And um, usually that's the way that the Lord, that's what the Lord uses to get people's attention. Yes. So that makes a lot of sense. I think so. Yes. <laughs> What can you add to that, Ella? Well, so God is warning us because the lightning of lies is basically trying to tell us like bad things, like you're never gonna make it. Oh, negativity. Yeah, or you yeah. stuff like that. Okay. So God's trying to warn us to protect our hearts and hide our hearts in that so that won't affect us. I like that very much. Yes. Here's a scripture from Ezekiel. Ezekiel 3, 12 and 13. Then the Spirit lifted me up and I heard behind me a strong thunderous voice. Blessed is the glory of the Lord from his, from his place. I also heard the noise of the wings of the living creatures, those are angels, that touched one another and the noise of the wheels beside them and a great thunderous noise. You know, I was watching a, a video um, on, on Facebook the other day. Hey, Eva Rogers, good to see you here. Uh, Eva, got your message, I think that was last night, uh, about you being in the hospital. And uh, we're, we will be praying for you today before we sign off. Hope you're doing better. Um, but there was a video of a worship service. And during the worship service, mm -hmm. um, you could hear the sound of a shofar. What's a shofar? A shofar is, a, is like a, a ram's horn, like a little, like a curly horn uh -huh. that you blow into. Oh. And it's, in the Old Testament, they used it as a sign of, uh, as a, a call to worship. They blow the horn, like <laughs> And 
anyway, during the worship time, <clears throat> they have it on video, you can hear a shofar, but nobody had a shofar. And so the lady that was leading worship said, who has the shofar over there? And no one had a shofar. And she said, well, the angel of the Lord is here blowing the shofar. Now, I don't know what to make of all that. Um, oh, even they, they may put a stint in. Okay. Uh, that's something to help your heart get more blood to and, to and, fro, to and fro in, in your heart. Okay. Uh, so anyway, um, it, that would be like a thunderous uh, sound from heaven that God's getting ready to do something. Now, I want to talk about this lightning for a minute. All right. Um, there's another side of it, of lightning. Let me uh, let me let me show you something here. Okay. In Matthew twenty-eight, everyone should know Matthew twenty-eight is about the resurrection of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But uh, when in Matthew twenty-eight, in verse number th number three, uh, number two, there was a great earthquake, and an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door, and the angel sat upon the rock. And it says his countenance was like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. You now, sometimes when there's a an angel um, appearing to people, they're very bright, and very, very much like lightning. And so, an another thing is in Luke chapter nine, we have the story of the transfiguration when Jesus was transfigured before uh, John and Peter. Um, and Moses and Elijah came and, and they had a little conversation. But Matthew, I'm sorry, Luke 9, 29, as Jesus prayed, the appearance of his face was altered and his robe became white and glistening. Some people think it became white like lightning. It was like... <laughs> Something happened, and he got he, oh. his face changed, and he he was radiant. Um, and there's another part in Daniel chapter ten, when Daniel had a vision of the Lord. It says this: His body was like beryl, his face like the appearance of lightning. So there's something, to, and so what I want to get to is thunder. Beware! Get ready! Lightning. Well, there will be lies and temptation and deceit and all this deception going on. But when Jesus appears, he comes like lightning to bring light and hope to the situation. Yeah. And I like that aspect of it. Yeah. So I wonder if anyone has had lightning, uh, thunder and lightning in your, in your situation, in your experience lately. For instance, you know, a thunder... A, a type of thunder could be, man, I was almost in a car accident the other day. But it, it made me think like, okay, God is with me. I got to pay more attention. But it, it woke me up. It woke me up. And the lightning could be that, well, the Lord has something for me, something good and positive for me. I don't want to get trapped in any negativity that I might miss what the Lord is trying to do or say to me or through me. So talk to us, Ella. What do you think about all that? Thunder and lightning. So God is warning us, you know, to protect our hearts and our minds. But he's not warning us just of lies and bad stuff. Okay. He's warning us of what he may do, too. Right. Now, if we don't do good, let's say he warns us. Mm -hmm. We don't listen to the warning. Mm hmm we kind of forget about it. Uh -huh. What are we going to do when the lightning of Christ comes when we're in a negative situation? Well, now that's a hard situation. <laughs> well, we're going to feel bad, right? Yeah. We're going to be embarrassed probably. But we better repent and make it right. Yes. After any bad thing you do, you have to 
say you're sorry and ask for forgiveness. Right. right. And you're good. And that brings God's favor back on us, right? Yeah. So in that case, then the lightning... Well, you know what? Here's, here's something. Let's say we get a warning from God. Mm -hmm. We don't heed the warning. We do something stupid or sinful. And then lightning comes and, and, and we're, we're exposed and we, we realize you know, how, how seriously off we are. And God does something and we miss what God's doing. We realize it later. But it tells us we have to get back on track so that we don't miss the lightning that comes. Yeah. I think um, last Sunday at church, mm -hmm. we had some thunder and lightning. Mm -hmm. And I think this Sunday at church, we're going to have some more thunder and lightning. Mm -hmm. I think the thunder is, you know, uh, praise is going to go up. Hey, did everyone hear you singing on Sunday, by the way? In your little area? Yeah. Were you singing loud? I was trying to. Well, let me, let me tell everyone. Ella has a reputation as singing loud. I wonder where you, where you get that from, by the way. Mommy. I think sometimes I hear your mommy. She's way in the back. I hear her way up in the front. Her voice cut, kind of cuts through. And you're taking after her, aren't you? I guess. You are. And people even comment on it. <clears throat> you and your brother and your sister <laughs> singing loud. But see, in that, in that, those times of worship, it's like thunder. It's like God is, and God begins to speak to us during our worship time. I think your mom is the one who told me that she learned when she was at Master's Commission, when we tell God who He is, He tells us who we are. So when we say, Lord, we bless you, you are holy, you are worthy, you are wonderful, you know, you are exalted, He begins to speak back over us. You know, the scripture does say that the Lord speaks over His people, He sings over His people. So as we praise Him, He sings over us and speaks over us. To me, that's like thunder. That's like God speaking during times of worship. Yeah. And then uh, if you remember on Sunday, after we had worship, one of our brothers came up and he told, whispered in my ear, said, Pastor Rick, I have a word from the Lord. I, I, I have to share this. I said, yeah, go ahead. And um, he, he got the mic and he shared one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit about what God was doing at that time. Oh. And it was really good. Sometimes people speak in tongues and they interpret but sometimes people just speak in English. So to yeah. me, that's thunder. That's, that's like the thunderous voice of the Lord. Now sometimes, mm -hmm. if you think about it, sometimes mm -hmm. thunder, man, I can remember at times, thunder would be so loud, it would kind of shake me in, in the house. Like I would like, I would jump. Yeah. Now one time in our old house, um, your mommy says worship is a conversation. That's right. We were at our old house, Stacy. you remember this, and, and thunder was outside. And then the lightning hit the house. Hit the house? It hit the house, and, and there was a, what do you call it, an electrical outlet on the wall. And the, the lightning hit somewhere on the top, I guess. And it came into the electrical current of the house and knocked that outlet right out of the wall. You remember that, Stacy? And uh, we were all like, oh my goodness, there was thunder and lightning really quick, boom, boom. And um, they say, the closer the thunder and lightning is to each other. Oh, Stacey, your mom said it came through our front door. Oh. Wow, that was a little scary. But the closer the thunder is to the lightning, or the lightning is to the thunder, uh, is, is, is how close it really is in real life. So, so a lot of times you hear thunder, and then you count one, two, Three, or, or you see lightning and then thunder, or vice versa, and you count. And each second is like a mile. But if it's boom, boom, it's right there. It could hit your house. Uh -oh. Or it could hit you, as a matter of fact. Uh -oh. And then we'd be in trouble. But anyway, so yeah, so I think in worship, it's like thunder. Mm -hmm. And then the lightning would be, during the preaching, it's like... God is speaking, God is speaking, God is speaking, and he, he appears like, a, like light in the room, and like it lights up our heart, lights up our soul, lights up our spirit. Yeah. I like all that. Well, we have four minutes. Four minutes to go. 
with all those scriptures. Yeah, we're not gonna, <laughs> we're not gonna <laughs> we make it. Do it all. No. But maybe we could read one more. About thunder or lightning? Which one would you like? Mm, thunder. Thunder? Yeah. All right. Let's go to Revelation. I might be able to read two in Revelation because they're close to each other. Revelation 14.2. You want to read it? Okay. 14.2. And I heard a voice from heaven like the voice of many waters, like the voice of a loud thunder. And I heard the sound of harpists playing their harps. Could you imagine that? Wow. <laughs> that is. Let's see, uh, Revelation 19, verse 6, <coughs> says this. And I heard, as it were, the voice of great multitude, and the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty thunderings, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God um, omnipotent. omnipotent reigns. Yeah, so, okay, so here's the thing. Let's say at church during worship time, everyone's in the in the mode of like worshiping. And mm -hmm. Hallelujah, glory, glory, glory to God. And there's like a sound of thundering going on. Do you think it's actually? <laughs> and in that setting, many times the Lord does speak through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Someone will then raise their voice above everyone and either speak in tongues and interpret it, uh, or someone will speak in English. And just have a word from the Lord. Yeah. So I want to encourage everyone, be looking out for the thunder, be looking out for the lightning. God speaks. Now, not in the physical sense, of course, but in the spiritual sense. What thunderous events are happening in your lives right now? Like major events, a health crisis, a financial crisis, a relationship crisis. Something's going on that really has rocked your world. That would be thunder. Mm -hmm. But get ready for the lightning to come. And notice, lightning comes really quick. Yeah. So sometimes God comes really quick. And so get ready for God to break into your situation and, ex and expose his face, his love, his light, his hope in the midst of your thunder. I, I like that. So Ella, do you have any more words of wisdom? Well, one thing is, you should always, so we walk in victory, right? Yes. But, say, God's warning us of the bad things, and the bad things are trying to tell us we're defeated. Right. Yeah, and make us feel like that. Right. But we walk in victory. We have a victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's one scripture in 1 Corinthians 15 that says, Oh, death, where is your sting? It's swallowed up in victory. And thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. So Jesus is our answer, even as we go through these troubled times. Yes. You know, I know that statement, very good, death, where is your sting? Because we did banners on a song. Oh, said. you did? Yeah. Hey, aren't we about due for another banner presentation? We are. Are you thinking about it? Yeah, actually, I really want to do one. <laughs> well, let's try to make that a reality. Yeah. Okay, everyone, we're going to take a minute to pray for uh, Eva that's in the hospital right now. And uh, we're also going to pray for Alinda that's going through some uh, difficulties as well. So, And then you could pray us out. Okay. Okay, let's pray, everybody. Dear Lord, thank you for Thursday talk today. I'm so glad Ella made it, made it back in time. And uh, Lord, we do want to pray right now for, for Eva as she's up in the hospital, Lord. Be with the doctors. Anoint uh, her stay there. Um, anoint her medical team with great wisdom and knowledge to know what to do to help her. Lord, if she needs a stint, let that procedure go smoothly without any complications. Let her lungs be clear. Let her heart be healthy. And uh, just continue to comfort her and strengthen her in the name and authority of Jesus. We, we thank you for that, Lord. We also want to lift up our sister Alinda today down in Virginia. 
We pray, Lord, for her health to be good. Uh, we pray for healing in her body. Um, all the side effects from the COVID she's had uh, have been very detrimental. We pray for healing and strength. We pray, Lord, also for her, her uh, rental situation, uh, that her place where she lives will be secure and uh, that those issues will be resolved very quickly. So thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful day. I hope that this has helped someone, and I'm thankful that you gave me and Pop the right words to say. Yes, Lord. So please bless everybody on and everybody not on. I hope we have a good day. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. amen. Well, oh. goodbye. Oh, you, oh okay. Uh, uh, Christine, we're going to be praying for you. And David, we're still praying for you as well. Uh, I promise we'll, we'll be praying for you. As soon as I get off, I'm going to pray for both of you. But it's 1232, got to run. And uh, thank you for joining us. One last final word, Miss Ella. God loves you. God loves you. And so do I. All right, that's a good word. Well, have a good week. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on Sunday. Teen Challenge will be with us. Invite a friend. And then join us for the picnic afterwards. Yes, I'm very excited for that. That's going to be great. Also, Sisterhood is Friday night at 6.30 at the church. Okay, God bless you. Love you. Bye.